Ever wondered why the world is buzzing with so many diverse forms of life? How does this vast array of organisms coexist? Well, let's dive into the intriguing world of biodiversity to find out. Biodiversity is the heartbeat of our planet, a symphony of life in all its forms and functions. It's the variety and variability of life on Earth. But it's more than just a collection of different species. It's a complex, interwoven tapestry of genetics, species, and ecosystems that together create the world as we know it. At the most basic level, we have genetic diversity. This is the variety of genes within a single species. Think of it like a deck of cards. Each card or gene has a unique role, and together they make up the complete deck or species. This genetic variety is fundamental to species survival, allowing them to adapt to changing environments and resist disease. Moving up a notch, we have species diversity. This encompasses the multitude of different species on our planet. From the tiniest microbe to the largest whale, each species has its role in the ecosystem. It's like a grand orchestra with each species playing its unique part in the symphony of life. Lastly, we have ecosystem diversity. This refers to the variety of habitats, biological communities, and ecological processes on Earth. From the lush rainforests to the arid deserts, each ecosystem is a unique ensemble of species interacting with each other and their physical environment. It's the grand stage where the symphony of life is performed. All these levels of biodiversity interconnect and interrelate in a delicate balance. They form a resilient network that supports life on Earth, ensuring the survival of countless species, and by extension, our own. So in essence, biodiversity is the vibrant, teeming variety of life on Earth, each playing its unique part in the grand scheme of nature. We are but one note in this symphony. Let's explore further to understand how we can ensure that this melody continues to play for generations to come. Ever tried to sort out your laundry and ended up with a mismatched pair of socks? Imagine sorting out millions of species. It's like trying to organize a giant, global sock drawer where every sock is different. That's essentially what scientists are up against when they attempt to classify the world's biodiversity. Now, just as you might sort your socks by color or pattern, scientists use a classification system to organize organisms. This system, known as taxonomy, is a bit like nature's filing cabinet. It helps us understand the relationships between different species, just as your sock drawer helps you understand which socks go together. The classification system starts broad with kingdoms and gets more specific as we move down to phyla, classes, orders, families, genera, and finally species. Imagine it as a family tree, where the great-great-great-grandparents are the kingdoms and the individual children are species. It's a bit like sorting your socks into piles for athletic socks, wool socks, ankle socks, and so on, until you get down to that one specific pair of red polka dot socks that you love to wear on Tuesdays. The distinguishing characteristics of organisms play a key role in this classification process. For instance, animals with backbones go into one group, while those without are sorted into another. It's like separating your cotton socks from your wool ones. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. After all, without taxonomy, we'd be up to our eyeballs in unidentified species. It would be like trying to find your favorite pair of socks in an unsorted drawer. You might eventually find them, but it's going to take a lot longer and be a lot more frustrating. So, just like your socks, nature has its own way of keeping things sorted. Isn't that something? Why does a bee need a flower and a flower need a bee? It's all about survival, folks. Now let's dive into the nitty-gritty of biodiversity within species for survival. Imagine each species as a giant jigsaw puzzle. Each individual is a unique piece that contributes to the overall picture. If we lose too many pieces, the image starts to blur and the whole system can collapse. Now, imagine a game of musical chairs. In a diverse population, if a disease wipes out some individuals, there are still plenty of chairs left for others to survive. But if a population is not diverse, it's like a game of musical chairs with only one chair. When the music stops, it's game over. Now let's broaden our scope to biodiversity within and among communities. Here it's less of a game of musical chairs and more like a robust network of interconnected threads. Each thread represents a species, and the strength of the network depends on the diversity of these threads. Picture a forest with a hundred different types of trees. If a disease wipes out one type of tree, the forest still thrives because of the other 99 types. That's resilience, folks. But if that forest only had one type of tree to begin with, it would be left barren by the disease. Think of it as a potluck dinner. The more diverse the dishes, the more likely everyone will find something they like. But if everyone brings the same dish, well, let's just say it's going to be a very monotonous meal. 
So, in the grand survival game of life, biodiversity is the ace up nature's sleeve. It's the secret ingredient that keeps ecosystems robust, adaptable, and resilient. It's the reason why a bee needs a flower and a flower needs a bee. In conclusion, when we talk about biodiversity, we're not just talking about variety for variety's sake. We're talking about survival, resilience, and the intricate interplay of life on Earth. So, biodiversity is not just about variety, it's about survival and resilience. Ever noticed how everything in nature seems connected? Well, it's not a coincidence. Picture a bustling city, with each citizen playing their part to keep the metropolis humming. That's pretty much how biodiversity works. Each organism, whether it's a mighty elephant or a minuscule microbe, plays its own unique role in the grand scheme of things. This interconnectedness is what we call the web of life. Let's take a moment to ponder the humble honeybee. These little buzzers are responsible for pollinating nearly three quarters of the plants that produce 80% of the world's food. Talk about a crucial job! Without bees, our supermarket shelves would look a lot less colorful. But it's not just about the bees. Consider the wolves in Yellowstone National Park. When they were reintroduced in the mid-90s after a 70-year absence, the entire ecosystem underwent a dramatic transformation. Deer populations became healthier and more balanced, vegetation flourished, and even the rivers changed their course. Turns out, the presence of wolves had a domino effect on the entire ecosystem. The same concept applies to the ocean. Phytoplankton, the microscopic plants floating on the ocean's surface, produce over half of the world's oxygen. They're the base of the marine food web, feeding everything from microscopic animals to massive whales. These examples show us how species are interdependent, and their interactions with each other and their environment create a delicate balance that sustains biodiversity. It's like a finely tuned orchestra where each instrument contributes to the overall symphony. But remember, each thread in this web is vital. If one breaks, it can unravel the entire system. It's like a game of Jenga, take out one block and the whole tower can come tumbling down. So, whether we're talking about bees, wolves, or phytoplankton, it's clear that every organism has a role to play in this intricate web of life. The more diverse an ecosystem, the more resilient it becomes, capable of withstanding change and supporting a wide array of life. So every organism has a role to play in this intricate web of life. But what happens when an uninvited guest crashes the party, or the weather goes haywire? Imagine you're hosting a party. Everything's going smoothly until an uninvited guest shows up. This guest is loud, eats all the food, and just won't leave. In the world of biodiversity, this guest is known as an invasive species. These species arrive in new environments often due to human activities and they thrive, outcompeting native species for resources and altering habitats. Take the brown tree snake in Guam, for example. Accidentally introduced after World War II, it wreaked havoc on the local bird population, leading to the extinction of several species. Invasive species like the brown tree snake pose a significant threat to biodiversity, disrupting ecosystems, and leading to a loss of species diversity. Now, let's imagine another scenario. The party is in full swing, but suddenly the weather changes dramatically. The heaters break down in the middle of winter, or the air conditioning fails during a summer heat wave. This is akin to climate change, another major threat to biodiversity. As global temperatures rise, habitats change, polar ice caps melt, forest fires increase and weather patterns become more unpredictable. Species that have adapted to specific climates are suddenly thrust into conditions they can't handle. The polar bear, adapted to icy environments, struggles as its habitat melts away. Coral reefs, which support a quarter of all marine species, bleach and die as ocean temperatures rise. These changes have a domino effect, impacting not just individual species but entire ecosystems. The loss of a single species can disrupt food chains, affecting the survival of other species and the health of the ecosystem as a whole. So, biodiversity faces threats both from within and outside and these threats have far-reaching impacts. It's like hosting a party where the guests can't get along and the thermostat is on the fritz. Without the right balance and conditions, the party, or in our case, biodiversity, is at risk. So, what have we learned from our journey through the world of biodiversity? Quite a lot, actually. We've discovered that biodiversity is the vibrant variety of life on Earth, from the smallest microorganisms to the largest blue whales. It's a symphony of life, with each organism playing its own unique part. We've explored the fascinating process of classification, a system that helps us understand the intricate relationships between different species. 
we delved into the interrelationships among species and their environment and how these connections sustain biodiversity. We've also talked about the looming threats to biodiversity, such as invasive species and climate change and their devastating impacts. And let's not forget the crucial role biodiversity plays in agriculture. It's a vital cog in the wheel supporting our food systems and livelihoods. Remember, biodiversity is the symphony of life and each organism, no matter how small, plays a crucial note. Let's keep the music playing.